Hey, what's up, friends? Thanks for coming back to the channel. I know it's been kind of a long time. I've been busy with a lot of other projects and stuff, but in the process, I've been trying to teach myself a few new frameworks and strategies and code languages and et cetera. So I thought I'd pass along that knowledge to you. Um, and today, what I want to talk about is Blazor WebAssembly. And Blazor WebAssembly is this really cool framework by Microsoft that essentially uses C Sharp for both back-end and front-end code. So you can build an entire website out of just C sharp. So no JavaScript involved, nothing like that. It's really cool. I mean, you can add JavaScript if you want, but you can make the whole website basically just out of C sharp, which is really neat. And it basically uses the .NET framework in order to do that. So for some prerequisites for this uh, particular class today, which by the way, is going to be multi-part. This is just going to be the very, very beginnings of it getting started. Um, the prerequisite is, of course, you're going to need some Visual Studio. I've got Visual Studio 2022. Uh, you can also be running Visual Studio Code if you want. There's nothing wrong with that one. That one works just fine. In fact, uh, all the instructions that I give you today are going to be based off of e using either one of those, but will work for Visual Studio Code. Um, and then you're also going to need uh, the .NET framework. So if you open up your favorite browser and just do a search for uh, .NET download, then that should take you to the um, Microsoft.NET page, and then it'll give you the opportunity to download that. If, of course, my internet decides it wants to start working right now. Um, I'm sure some of you have noticed this in your daily life, that whenever you need something, uh, that's when it just decides to not work. But anyways, I'm going to be using .NET 7.0 over here. So if you come to this page, the .net.microsoft.com slash ENUS download, uh, or do just like I did, just do a quick Google search or whatever search for uh, .NET, and then you're going to download the SDK. Um, get it for the uh, appropriate machine that you're running on. I've got a 64-bit version right here, so this one will work just fine. Uh, I've already downloaded it, I've already installed it and everything. If you want to see if it's actually installed on your computer, just do a command prompt. And actually, I don't think that's going to bring up the command prompt. That's going to bring up Visual Studio. There we go. Uh, bring up a command prompt and just type in dot, dot net. Oh my gosh. There we go. And then it should show you all this stuff here. Um, you can go dot net dash dash info. <clears throat> Whoops. That's in four. There we go. I'm not going to edit this at all, just FYI. So there you go. So you can see I've got. Um, where is it? Uh, version right there, 7.0.5 on a 64-bit architecture. Um, and then I've got all these other SDKs installed as well. You don't necessarily need those for this, uh, but you will need at least one version. Um, if you're going to go with a lower version, I would go with the 6.0 because it is long-term uh, support or LTS. So you can grab that as well. Uh, but it's really up to you, just as long as you have a version of .NET. So .NET and one of these coding things here. This is, of course, Visual Studio Code. I'm not going to be using that one today. I'm going to be using Visual Studio uh, 2022. But anyways, <clears throat> so now that we've got that all set up, uh, here's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and leave this open as it is. That's fine. And instead, I'm going to go to, let's see, I'm going to go to a folder on my computer where I keep all of my repos and stuff. And I'm going to make a new folder. There we go. And I'm just going to call it project, whoops, project one. There we go. And inside here, I'm going to say new web project. All right, and there we go, we got that. Uh, so with that, uh, you can do the same thing, make yourself a uh, like a folder someplace on your computer, understand where it is, and then we're gonna actually make the project in that folder using the .NET framework. Um, so it's actually pretty easy, kind of cool. Uh, I'll show you that real quick, so it looks like this. So, Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering what this search thing is that I have coming up here, um, it is not Bing search that you may be seeing in your Windows 11 machine. Uh, this is actually something called Power Tools. Uh, it's right here. So if you, or sorry, Power Toys, my bad. Uh, so if you get a chance, go ahead and check out the GitHub repo for Power Toys or just do a Google search for MS Power Toys. 
uh, and right now I've got version 0.68 and it works pretty good and it's customizable a whole bunch and it gives you a whole bunch of different things not just that search thing but a bunch of other cool stuff as well that you can check out but the search thing is by far the most useful thing out of it all right so with that uh, so here I am this is my um, this is my personal folder or whatever. What I want to get into is that folder that I was in before. So if I remember correctly, it was in my Git repos. Yeah, there it is. And then project one and then new web project. So I'm going to start by doing that. So CD and I'm going to say uh, Git repos. And then I'm going to do CD project one and then CD new web project. And I just hit tab to auto complete that all right so now i've got that going on there and so i'm going to use the uh the dotnet cli in order to make a new uh like application uh project solution etc and you can actually see like how to do that if you go dotnet new and then dash h i believe it should give you a list of i mean it's not that maybe it's dotnet new dash dash h Let's see. Oh, I'm sorry. It's .NET new dash list. There we go. Oh my goodness. .NET new dash dash list. That should be it. There we go. All right. So, sorry, that was in case you missed it. .NET new dash dash list. And this gives you a list of all the things that .NET can make uh, just from the command line. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the ASP.NET uh, Core web API. And we're going to be looking at the WebAssembly app as well. All right. And so what this kind of does is it basically makes it so that you can build the solution and the project right here from the CLI and then open in a Visual Studio. Now this is no different than if you did it from actual Visual, Visual Studio and said like create a new project. Um, you can totally do it that way as well. The reason we do it like this here is in case you're running Visual Studio Code, um, Visual Studio Code does not necessarily have that option there. So this is how you would do it. You could open up a Visual Studio Code, um, what you call it, a Visual Studio code my goodness it's just not my day here visual studio code that's not, of course vs code are you gonna show up for me no of course not that's fine that's fine we just do it on the fly it's no big deal all right so anyways you can open up vs code and then down here in the terminal you could easily just open up a new terminal window and do the same exact thing. So you can just CD out of that and go to whatever uh, thing you are um, going to be making into your uh, solution or project or whatever. And then you can run the whole .NET new dash dash list from there as well. And you can see it works the exact same way. So if you're running Visual Studio Code, that would be my suggestion is do it from VS Code's terminal just like that. All right, but anyway, so I'm not going to do that. We're going to go back to this. Uh, so what I want is a couple different things. I want, first of all, um, let's see, I want .NET new, and then I'm going to call it solution, S-L-N. See, right here is what you're getting on the left-hand side. Over here in the middle is the name that you use to make that thing. So I want a solution file, so I'm going to use the shorthand S-L-N. I can also type in full-on solution. I'm just going to say S-L-N, though. And then what it'll do is it'll make a solution based off of the name of the folder that it's in. So it's in new web project, so the solution is going to be called new web project. So I'm just going to do that real quick. And see if that will do its thing I hope I have a feeling that it's just gonna not want to work for me today which is this which is just you know it, it's it's standard that makes that makes sense yep see just dot net new SLN uh, let's see I think I think I've got it right yeah there we go I don't know what it just had a so dumb all right anyways this is what happens when you create content, but you're not a professional content creator. So I hope you're all right with that. All right, so anyways, I've got .NET new solution. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two more files in here. Um, I'm going to make a, let's see, I'm going to make a web API. And I'm going to get, put it in a folder. So I want to say .NET new web API, because that's what I want up here. I want this 
there we go I want a .NET Core Web API right there so in C sharp and then I want it to be in its own folder so I'm going to say n for the folder name and I'm going to call it API pretty standard stuff right there okay and then I'm going to do the same thing as well with the next part of the project that I want, which is going to be a web Blazor web assembly app. I don't want the Blazor server app, and I don't want the Blazor web assembly app empty. I do want some structure to the program. I want it to like have some of the stuff that it needs already in there. So Blazor web assembly app is what I want, which means I'm going to be using Blazor Wasm. So same thing as before. Dot net new. Blaze, oops, and I'm going to say that is going to be an N as well for a folder, uh, and I'm going to call this one client. Uh, you can name these whatever you want, actually. Sometimes people call them like web app dot client or front front end. You can do that. No, it, it, it's really up to you. Uh, it's going to make a folder for that particular project, though, and, and put it in there. So I'm going to say uh, new, whoops, blazer wasm, and then dash n, and then I'll call this client, or maybe I'll actually I'll call this front end, just so, oops, not caps lock, and there we go. And then that should make that. And then the last thing that I want to do is I want to add the solutions to it. So or sorry, I want to add the projects to the solution. So I'm going to say .NET and then SLN because there's only one solution in that folder. Add and then we'll say API. That was the name of the API that we made. So we're going to add that to it. And then we'll do the exact same thing with the .NET SLN add and we'll call that front end because that's what we called it initially. And so it's going to add both of those to the solution. Cool. And now what I should be able to do is minimize that. I'm going to go back to Visual Studio and I'm going to say open a project or solution. And I'm going to navigate to, where was it? What did I put it in? Project one, new web project. And there's my solution. And I open that up. And it should have two projects within it. It should have an API and it should have a front end. If I did everything right, Lord help me. Um, mine takes a little bit uh, while to load up just simply because I've got um, some extensions going on here specifically I've got writers um, resharper going on in the background here if you're a student uh, like or you still have access to your student email you can actually get free writer software uh, but just by going to the writer website and signing up as a uh, student and what that'll do is it'll give you the all of the writer stuff so like uh, or not writer I'm sorry JetBrains JetBrains is the name of the brand JetBrains is the name of the brand writer is the name of the IDE for developing stuff uh, in it um, but anyway so the JetBrains extension resharper right here um, you can totally get that for free by just going to the JetBrains website and signing up and saying like hey I'm a student and making sure that you have access to your student email um, I'm gonna be honest I haven't been a student for a couple of years at this point but I do still make sure that I keep my student email active uh, it's something to the effect of like making sure that you check it every couple months that's it uh, making sure you're logged in and check it every couple months and then it'll remain active even after you've graduated and then you can just there you go use it indefinitely so keep that in mind uh, so anyways as I mentioned here's my solution and then I've got an API and I've got a front end and here's my blazer front end project right here and then over here is my back end API in C sharp and so as it stands right now this is all the basic basic basics stuff in it and it's like there's not not really a whole bunch more going on here um, there's a few changes that I want to make but right now what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to change this to open up the front end and take a look at what we've got right now real quick um, just to show that you do still have like a working application here it is bare bones and bare minimum uh, it does not access the api on the back end we'll set that up at a later video uh, but right now as it is i do have a blazor web assembly app that opens up in your browser i'm going to go ahead and accept that risk because i know what it is and you should get this there it is and that is your blazor 
web app, web assembly app. Pre pretty simple. It's got the little counter, uh, it does a little fetch data thing, which is cool. Uh, and then of course the home with the little survey. So that's it, there's your, there's your WebAssembly app, done. Uh, so I'm glad this came up, I've gotta change a few things. First of all, to make my life a little bit easier, I'm gonna change this right here. So by the way, if you hadn't noticed, when you click on each one of the projects, you get this kind of, uh, this, this coding here. It looks kind of like an HTML, but it's not. It's, um, I think it's like XAML or something like that. I, I honestly don't know off the top of my head. Um, which I know is probably sounds like something that I should know, but it's like it, it's super not super not important. Um, but it is the project file essentially. Um, and with this project file, uh, there's a couple changes that I want to make. So if you click on the API uh, project file, don't make, don't change the name, but just click on the project file, and then you'll find in here where it says nullable and it says enable. We're going to go ahead and change that to disable, and just because it's going to make our lives a little bit easier, make sure you save it. And I'm going to do the exact same thing over here in the front end project as well. Once again, you notice nullable, enable, I'm going to change that to disable. There we go, and save it. All right, so I've got those two things taken care of, uh, and then I think that's pretty much all I really need to do at this point. Oh wait, there's one more thing that I want to do. Um, and this one has to do with dependencies. I want to make sure that these two apps are dependent on one another. But actually, I don't know if I really need them to be uh, exactly dependent on one another. Um, so like, let's see here. I've got my API here. And I've got my front end. Um, I don't think I need the dependency right now, but that'll be something that we'll add in a, a future video, so don't worry about that. For right now, that's what we've got, is we've got our Blazor WebAssembly app, and it is doing its app stuff. Uh, and like I said, it's not accessing the API right now. It is only just a front end right now, uh, with the pages and stuff showing on the front end with no access to a back end or a server, but we will absolutely add that in a future video. In fact, I believe it's the next video. We're gonna start setting up the API and testing that and making sure that it is working the way it's supposed to. So. For now, uh, hopefully that was informative. Hopefully that helped you get started with this stuff. Uh, hopefully that wasn't too slow and too basic for you. Um, if it was, go ahead and leave me a message in the comments. I do read the comments. Why? Because I only get like two a year. So that's fine. I've got plenty of time to do that. In, you know, in the meantime, though, uh, feel free to like work ahead and figure out if you can hook up your API the way it's supposed to and turn on the server and turn on, or not, not the server, but the uh, back end. We're going to be using SQL Server. Uh, in order to host our database for the time being. Uh, so see if you can figure that one out. But if not, no big deal. I will meet you back in the next video very shortly. All right, thanks for stopping by. See ya.